This is KGW News at this 11. This is our reality now. We have to live without them, which we never thought we'd have to do. We begin tonight with a heartbreaking story in Vancouver, where hundreds of people came together to remember Miche Melendez and her young daughter, Layla Stewart, after they were found dead last Wednesday in Washougal. Thank you for joining us. I'm Blair Best. Police have identified Kirkland Warren, Miche's ex-boyfriend, as a person of interest. He's accused of previously assaulting her and shooting up her apartment. Daisy Caballero was at the vigil today. People had nothing but loving things to say, both about Mache and Layla. Some of them told me they didn't know them personally, but wanted to show their support in any way that they could after hearing the heartbreaking story of their disappearance and now death. Amazing grace. We're here to have a public vigil and a call to action that the senseless murder of Miche and Layla did not have to happen. On Sunday morning, hundreds of people flooded Esther Short Park to remember 27-year-old Miche Melendez and her young daughter, Layla Stewart, after their bodies were found in Washougal last Wednesday. As of Sunday afternoon, no arrests have been made in the murders, but police have identified Kirkland Warren, Mache's boyfriend, as a person of interest in their disappearance. After court documents show he assaulted and shot up Mache's apartment and pressured her into dropping the charges. Mache had a restraining order against him, and this is the outcome. That's not right. Michelle Bart is the president of NW Cave, a Vancouver nonprofit that educates and prevents violence and exploitation against women and children. She says this case has been one of the hardest she's worked on, as it hit her on a personal level. Our my friend, who I didn't even know was a school teacher, is Layla's PE teacher, so it took on personal meaning. Close friends with Layla and Miche. Layla was pretty much my niece. So yeah, this has been very heartbreaking. Randall shares her daughter and Layla were born just two weeks apart, so they had an incredibly close connection. We hope something changes. We hope that if a victim comes out and they're scared, that the police do way more than what they did for her. The Vancouver mayor and police chief spoke at the vigil and shared their condolences with the family alongside Representative Sharon Wiley and Senator Linda Wilson, who sponsored the Tiffany Hill Act, a bill that orders domestic violence abusers to wear a GPS ankle monitor to notify the victim when their abuser is close by. This can't keep happening, and I, I have, I can't imagine the call or the knock at the door when you're told that your family is gone. We really want to honor the family and make sure they get, like, lots of support for their family that um, Layla and her mom is gone. Layla's schoolmates also showed their support at the vigil, sharing she was a kind and friendly little girl who had many friends at school. It's hard to imagine something like that happening for sure, and I have a lot of empathy and compassion, and um, like I said, we just wanted to be really supportive and let them know that people care and care enough to come out and do this. Bart tells KGW NW Cave will be looking for funeral homes that can bury both Mache and Layla together. They have also started a memorial fund for funeral costs. You can find that link on KGW.com. Daisy Caballero, KGW News. It has been a violent weekend in the Rose City with four reported shootings, including the deadliest shooting so far this year. That one happened Saturday afternoon in North Portland. Three people were killed in broad daylight. Tonight, a small memorial with balloons and flowers sits where it happened in a residential neighborhood near University Park. You can also see some shattered glass and other debris on the road still. Police say the three victims were in a car and pronounced dead at the scene. There is still no word on a suspect and no arrests have been made. That marks the 15th, 16th and 17th homicide in Portland this year and one that caught the attention of not only the police chief, but both the mayor and district attorney. Officials calling this shooting shocking.
Well, the latest shooting happened in Northeast Portland early this morning and three houses were hit. Police have not said if anyone was hurt. Bryant Clerkley joins us and Bryant, what more can you tell us? Hey Blair, there were more than 20 shell casings on the ground. One neighbor that lives in one of the houses that was shot at was close to falling asleep when she felt glass shatter around her. This was the scene early Sunday morning on Northeast Haslow and 87th Avenue. Bullet holes seen in the front window of a home, shell casings on the ground and windows shot out on cars. Andrea Hewlin was lying on the couch in her house when the gunshot started. I just heard pop, 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 pop and glass shatter and I felt it shatter across me and then it was yeah, terrifying. Hewlin was staying with her sister, who she went to check on after she heard the gunshots. Everyone in her house was all right, which she's thankful for. Grew up here and I've never, like my whole life, ever, ever experienced like gunshots through the house. Sunday evening, bullet holes in some of the homes were still noticeable. The area seemed a lot more quiet. Some residents who slept through the shooting were not surprised to hear that it happened. You know, typically, I mean, we're on, on guard all the time. You're getting in on your car, you better have a look over your shoulder before you open that door because you don't know who's going to roll up on you. You know, we've had people arrested in my backyard. McCarthy thinks police should patrol the area more, which could cut down on some of the gun violence. This time it's our neighborhood. Next time it'll be, you know, four blocks down. And we've reached out to police to get more information on this shooting. And when we do, we'll update everyone on air and on our website, KGW.com. Blair. Bryant, thank you. There was a fatal crash earlier today after a driver smashed this stolen truck into a tree. It happened along Northeast Washougal River Road in Clark County. Now, as you can see, this white truck is completely ruined. Its front is crushed and the roof is off. First responders found one person in the truck after the crash and they were badly hurt. The driver was taken to the hospital where he died. The truck was reported stolen from Portland yesterday. The owner has been told about the crash and law enforcement will continue to investigate. There was also a vehicle theft in Gresham. Authorities say a Kia, similar to the one in this picture, was taken around 615 this morning along Northeast 162nd Avenue. The car's owner bought it three days ago. And at last check, the car has not been found and no arrests have been made. Gresham police have this recommendation, though, to all drivers tonight. That's to get an anti-theft device, something like a steering wheel lock that will reduce the likelihood of your car being stolen. Well, we have seen two different seasons wrapped up in one weekend when it comes to weather, Joe. Yeah, I think the one season people would like to see is summer like conditions, yes, right? I know we're, jump, we're jumping again <laughs> on that, Blair, but I have maybe two days at most where we'll be seeing temperatures where we should be, and that doesn't arrive until okay, Wednesday good. and Thursday. But as we look at your weather headlines, of course, for a lot of Oregonians, this is spring break. Uh, not bad, but it's not great. Now you're going to be seeing a little nice start for tomorrow, but again, some showers roll in later. Late tomorrow night, the models have kind of been backing off, off a little bit on when it arrives. I first I, during the earlier shows tonight, I was saying right around late afternoon, early part of the evening. Now I'm saying uh, right around late tomorrow night and into early Tuesday morning. So this is the first system I'm tracking. This is going to out in the Gulf of Alaska. This is going to pour in some cold air and start to drop some snow levels. So Monday night into Tuesday, you're going to be seeing heavy mountain snow and even the potential for some coast range snow as well. This other system I'm looking at is well offshore now along the uh, southern Oregon coast and northern California coast. Those two are going to bring in uh, some windy and wet conditions again late tomorrow night and into Tuesday. The heaviest amount of rain uh, looks to be throughout the central and southern part of the Willamette Valley. But as we put this into motion, we'll be seeing overcast skies a good part of tomorrow. The west side of parts of, you know, of the Oregon coast could be seeing a little, I should say the northern part of the Oregon coast should see some a little more of the sunshine. But again, as this system moves on shore, expect heavy rain and wind at times. Newport South and here in the metro area, we will be looking at a little bit of some scattered showers at times. And as we go throughout the later part of Tuesday, we will see some drier weather move in as a ridge of high pressure moves in for Wednesday and into Thursday. I'll talk more about that in my detailed forecast. All right. Thanks, Joe.
Well, check this out. Researchers with Oregon State University are trying to better protect whales from getting caught in fishing gear. Well, earlier this week, I got the chance to talk with some of them about that. Turns out they've also discovered some areas of the ocean are at more risk for whales to get caught up in that gear. Here's some more details. Up close and personal, these whales are simply spectacular to see, but way beneath the ocean is where they run into trouble. Around Coos Bay, Newport, Garibaldi, and then went down on the south coast. Over the last six years, Oregon State University, along with the Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife, have been trying to determine when and where these whales get entangled with fishing gear, specifically with crabbing gear. They have determined some of the hot spots are along the central and southern Oregon coast where they run into problems. We're mostly talking about fixed gear fisheries here, uh, which are not nets, they're lines in the water. So, uh, you know, a buoy attached to a line, attached to a trap or pot on the ocean floor. Troy Buell is with the Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife. He says they made changes to crabbing season a couple of years ago to help prevent whales from getting entangled. And we also reduced the number of pots by 20 percent that fishermen are allowed to fish during that time period. Trying to track these whales isn't easy, but four times a month, researcher Lee Torres is just one of the researchers with OSU that goes up in a Coast Guard helicopter to track them. It's by overlaying, you know, where we think whales are with where we think the fishing effort is, we can then look at, you know, those timing patterns. They have found that early spring is when there is an increase in whales getting caught. Commercial Dungeons Crab fishing industry is still operating in April, and that's also when there are a lot of whales start to show up in the region. So, um, so that overlap you know, between the two creates high, high risk. Doris says whales can be stuck in that gear for months, sometimes longer. Cause, you know, direct injury to them, but it can also, you know, cause them to drown or you know, reduce their ability to reproduce and feed and survive. So with some changes by fishing, researchers are hoping it makes a big difference for these animals.